Hello, mass lovers. Today we're gonna go a little through apply to geometry. That's so that mass doesn't seem to be a real abstract one. So it's not an abstract science itself because if you apply to something in physics or to science, you actually feel how it can be rewarding for you guys. Okay, so who are interested in how Hipparchus actually measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon, that's exactly what I'm going to say and try to apply uh, a, a bit of mass here and a bit of trigonometry. All right, so you might feel like you've got a good grasp on how far away the Moon is, but actually, so probably don't. It looks a lot closer than actually it is, okay? In fact, most things in outer space, they look closer than they actually are. Okay, you might also even be overwhelmed by the true vastness and actually emptiness of the space. Okay, so let's get a deep dive in how Hipparchus measured distance from the Earth to the Moon. It was long ago, around in the second century before Christmas, he was the Greek astronomer and actually the greatest astron astronomer of antiquity. So. At least he's considered to be so. So he was also mathematician. Let's see how actually he discussed and which like which pre knowledge he used in order to do so. So let's consider two towns x and y on the Earth's equator. So look here, we are on the Earth's equator. That's the top view, a view from the top. This is the Earth. It's like round and blue one. And here is the moon. So and actually, in reality, if you take the Earth as a basketball ball, and if you have the moon, how do you think? And comparative and relative size to the Earth, to the size of the Earth for the moon, it's going to be like a tennis ball, actually. And if you go about, I don't know, about like 30 meters away from the basketball ball, that will be a relative distance moon to the Earth. Okay, so... But actually, in, uh, if you see from the Earth's surface, you it seems to you that the Moon is actually closer than it actually it is. Okay, so let's consider two towns, X and Y, on the equator of the Earth, so Y and X. And, for example, for those people who are, who are here in the town X, the, the Moon is actually in Zenith. So what does it mean Zenith? So they can see it overhead, right? So it's directly overhead. That's how people from town X can observe it. So from the town Y, where actually people observe in the moon, it seems for them that the moon is almost over the horizon, right? So the moon is just visible, like almost over the horizon. Okay, here we go. So let's say this is the longitude. So if you if you study geography, you understand what longitude is, okay? So basically the angle x can be measured using the longitude between two towns x and y. So actually Hipparchus used to do that. So the longitude between towns x and y which Hipparchus calculated to be approximately 89 degrees. So that's why this angle X is round, so we can mark, so X in degrees is around 89 degrees, so at least we can use this measure. All right, we also know that the radius of the Earth is about 6,378 kilometers. So what can you say? You can measure the round trip, the world trip, so around the Earth along the equator line, okay? So in this case, you'll see that the, the, the total dis travel distance around basically circumference here, if we consider the Earth as to be ideal sphere, but actually it's not that specific surface that can be used in order to describe the surface of the Earth, okay? It's called geoid, all right? But here, for simplicity, we'll consider Earth as the pure circle, if we can see a cross-section from the top. Alright, so 
we can figure out, okay, so if their total travel distance about 40,000, so 40,000 kilometers around, so we can simply calculate the radius. Just remember the circumference lines. So you'll see that circumference range is 2 pi r, where you can say that 47 approximately is 2 times 3.14 and times the radius, where you can figure out the approximate value for the radius here as around 6378 kilometers. Okay, so let's get straight to the point. So we are going to measure the distance from here, from the center of the Earth, right to the center of the Moon, okay? At least. So what we can do, we can see that this Y to the center of the Moon, let's put a letter M here. So YM is simply the tangent, right? Just remember properties for the circle. So this is the tangent line. And if the tangent touch the circle at one point, it will be perpendicular to the radius. So hence, we've got 90 degrees angle here. So basically, the radius here of the Earth is perpendicular to the tangent line and to the segment MY. All right. So we have another line MX that goes through the town X and goes straight to the center of the Earth. Oh. Okay, so we have... We have a right angle triangle, M, Y, O. So with the right angle, Y. Okay, so if it's right angle, just remember how we can relate or connect or link two sides with angle. So simply, if we use this angle, X, which is 90, 89 degrees, so we can say that X is about 89 degrees. So how we can use and those data in order to calculate the distance to the moon, AMO. We simply say that MO is the height, right? So this triangle is right angle, right angled. So we will use the hypotenuse. So this is height, right? MO simply height. And how can we express through angle. Just remember trigonometric relations, all right? We've got height, we've got radius, which is known, and this radius is adjacent, so we can say this is adjacent side. So just remember from the trigonometric equations, we've got adjacent side is simply height times cosine of the angle x, okay? So from where we can express height, as adjacent side over cos x. So adjacent side in our case is the radius. So we simply divide radius by the cos of the angle x. Now let's plug some figures inside and we've got 6378 kilometers over cos of 89. Just remember how calculator works you need to press the cos button and so your input is 89 degrees so that's degrees measure so as the output on your calculator so input as the output you'll get what you'll get the number so degrees converted into the number so you'll get the number here all right so let's calculate just use your calculator and just try to calculate Okay, so how much you've got? I've got very, very small number. So the output here, so it's very, very small number. It's 0 0.070 and 45. All right, so quite small. What are we going to do now in order to find the distance to the moon, MO? It's simply 603. 78 kilometers, we measure in kilometers. So this number doesn't have any units, so we simply divide by 0, 0, 70, 45. And let's do and do it one more time on the calculator. 
6378. So one more time. 6378 over this small value, but um, one more time, use cos. Okay, so I'll get 365 and 451. So it's around 365,000 and about 500 kilometers. That's the distance, okay? If you have a look in Wikipedia or somewhere else, probably in some physic, uh, reference for physics, you'll find out that the true distance, that's average, will be around, as I remember, 380 something, probably 384 or something, right? So why we have this difference? So first of all, first of all, we measure from the center, from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. However, the normal distance, I think they consider as from the surface, because you observe the Moon from the surface to the Moon. So what we can do, we have MO, and that's why we need to subtract this radius, right? So on top of that, in order to define the distance, so the actual distance from the surface, so from the surface of the Earth to the Moon, okay, to the center of the Moon, is going to be the next one. So this is Mx, and simply it's Mo minus radius. So if we plug the data, we've got 365, 451, we need to subtract the radius, 67378 kilometers. So we actually even more diminish our value. So let's subtract 6378 and we got around we got around 359073. And again compare this. It's even more or less than 384,000 kilometers. Why? You might ask why. So actually because, you know, the orbit, it's not a pure circle. We can imagine that's pure circle. However, the moon and some period of time might be far and to the Earth and so, for example, in another half of the period of rotation, of revolution around the Earth, it might be closer. So that's why this sort of the average distance. And by the way, probably this measure may be not so precisely, okay? However, Hipparchus uh, used less precise values for the radius. Now we used a bit more closer to the real value. So that how the distance can be calculated, okay? So I hope you enjoy that, hope you enjoy. Probably you can use that in your project for GCC like or extended version, I don't know. So anyway, anyway, if you want to explore something, this is the right time. And that was the problem one. So how to define the distance from the surface to the moon, all right? So the next part will be dedicated how Hipparchus actually measured the radius of the moon. So, because look, right now what we've got, we've got Mx, right? The Mx include the radius of the moon. If we want to have more precise data, we need to actually subtract the radius of the moon. So we need to know that and I hope we can do it soon, okay? So watch my next video dedicated to the problem to how Hipparchus actually measured the radius of the moon and you'll get be more educated and have some extra knowledge as the bonus. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.